Okay, this is our victim here. Um, this motor was also uh, given to me, and the bearings are super, super tight, so those are going to be replaced. And you also um, said that the uh, centrifugal switch, the starting, um, the starting switch was a little bit messed up. So I just pulled this capacitor, and I'm looking at... right here let me zoom in a little bit you see that right there a little powdery right there that's a blown capacitor usually you can yeah, it doesn't smell too healthy either it might still be good um, you can see the ruptured disc isn't completely ruptured but it is bulged um, so this capacitor is going to be replaced So, I already got all the screws out, so let's see if we can split the casing apart here. Give me a second to get this all apart here. Okay, I got the bell housing off. I had to uh, unsolder the capacitor. When I did that, I found that this bleed resistor actually was never soldered on to the terminal. It's not a huge thing. All this is there for to sap the residual voltage out of this when you have it off. So if you go to touch it afterwards, uh, you don't zap yourself. Now, here is our problem, is I think right here. I don't think it's necessarily this. This feels okay to me. Um, I mean, it moves in and out. I got a little bit of a funky movement on the side. I think that's just from gunk. But what I have right here is here's the starting ring that that pushes down on. And there's the contacts, and as you can see, uh, that's pretty nasty in there. So I think just from years of use, and as, you, let me see if I can get it to focus a little bit better, but. I don't know if you can tell where it hits, is right on the edge. It's not hitting the full pad, it's just hitting the edge of that. So hopefully I can clean that up and get that all back together. Um, the bearing is still in the housing right here in the bottom. That's super, super stiff. That's really stiff. That's also going to um, be an issue for you, too. If that was going, what it's going to do is slow the shaft down, and it's going to keep clicking that relay in and out once it gets to a certain RPM. Um, and it does have numbers on it, so hopefully I can pull that out and see what they are. And this side here should hopefully pull right out. And a piece of plastic but as far as the windings themselves go whoops I don't see any indication of um, burning or anything this is what's black is just dirt everything looks uh, okay it just needs to be cleaned up the inside here has no real scarring got one little scar but I think that's just from the factory because you can actually still see writing on that so that never touched I can feel this is really stiff let me see if I can let me get a punch and uh, I'm just gonna put this through a bench um, and punch this out hopefully we'll see if the bearing stays in the in the housing or if it comes off at the shaft All right, I got the bearing off of there. Um, when I tapped it out, it came off on the shaft, and I just used a, a puller to get it off. And I do have numbers on it. Um, it says Hoover 77202, 16 millimeter. So, um, or was it 16M? I don't know if that means millimeter or not. Anyway, um, 
I'll get this and uh, I'll get two of these and I'll get the one in here out. What I have is um, just a pry bar that'll go down there and hopefully I can get it out kind of like a slide hammer. Um, worst case scenario if I can't get it out in that way what I'll do is I'll drill a hole on either side here, a small one on the left and the right so I can get a punch in and drive it through and then those two holes I'll cover up with a screw. Um, and that'll allow me to drive that out because it doesn't sit right against there. There's a, there's a good probably half inch gap in that between the end of the bearing and the bottom here and there's a good uh, 30 years of grease in that too. So um, we'll go ahead and oil those those uh, bearings and when they come in hopefully I can put this all back together again and uh, I'll get another capacitor here. All, all you need to know on the capacitors is the microfarads which would be labeled as MFD, UF or a little funny little um, little weird symboly thing kind of like a, a U actually exactly like <clears throat> exactly like that there and the the vac this is 110 vac now that is not necessarily your voltage um, so in other words if you have a 115 volt motor or 120 volt motor you're not going to have 110 vac you might have 220 or something like that if you have a 208 volt motor it might be 330 or 440 that that's not an indication of voltage um, just be aware of that and uh, the bleed res bleed resistor I'll just I probably have one of these floating around in my electrical stock over there so We'll solder a new one into the new one when we get it. And then hopefully you can put this back together again and I'll have a, a, a running motor to make something with. Okay, we got everything cleaned up with the motor. With um, Sprayed it down with some motor cleaner. I had the new bearings pressed in the shaft. And um, the thing that was kind of pain in the ass with the bearings was that they were 16 millimeter bore, which is kind of a little bit of an oddball size, usually you know, 17, you know, um, 15 and 17 are kind of more readily available. And the actual new numbers on this, I got these from VXB, I believe. Uh, the new numbers are 6202Z. Um, cleaned up the centripet centrifugal switch here, made sure the action's nice and smooth, put a little bit of, a little bit of lube on the um, the uh, pivot points here. So that's all set. I did, to get the bearing out of the rear housing, I did have to put in a couple of holes in the back to be able to put a punch and pull it through. I wasn't able to get a heel bar in there and pull it out. Not a big thing though, I can just tap those and uh, plug them with a regular screw. And uh, went ahead and got a new capacitor. Now, like I said, that old one was uh, 341 microfarad, 110 vac. The new one's replacement capacitor usually will give you a range. As you can see, this new one's uh, 300, 360 microfarad, 110 to 125 vac. And I already soldered on the uh, bleed resistor that was on the old one. This one's probably still good, but it's starting to pucker in the middle in the uh, blow off hole here. Plus, what looks like white stuff around here, that's actual heat marks and arcing because this terminal is actually loose. So, we'll just get rid of this while we're on, while we're doing the rest of the motor. Now the only thing is you will very rarely be able to get the exact same size capacitor. Um, in other words, the, the, the microfarads in the vac and everything will match, but the actual physical size is different. As you can see, we're about an, an inch or so shorter than um, the original one, which is no big deal. I could just take up the extra room with uh, some padding of some sort. Um, they did have one that had like a little bit better of a range. It was, um, this one's 300, 360. The other one was, um, I believe 340 to 350. So it was a tighter range, but the size of it, it was, um, it was only about the size, a little bit bigger than a quarter, um, the size of a quarter round. It was only this long. So there was no way I would be able to fit it securely in the original housing it would just be floating around so I chose a little bit wider range 
but the same actual uh, diameter capacitor, just slightly shorter. So I will be able to hold it in the original uh, setup. I'll just have to put a pad over here just to space it out that extra little bit. Not a big deal. Um, also, that switch that looked really, really burnt and kind of crappy has been cleaned up and evened out. I evened up all the pits in with a, with a very fine jeweler's file. Um, just put them, push them together like they would be when they're uh, set closed. Put the file in between and just gently file away so you get nice clean material on both sides and you get good t contact all the way around. Also, um, since this is an old motor, you have the cloth covered rubber wire which tends to um, fray a lot and, and break, especially if the motor's been heating up or just from normal use. So what I like, I found one small, small break here in the capacitor wires and plus usually around the edges here with the switches from you bending it around, the actual um, cloth will start to fray and all it will do is it will end up just following down the entire wire. So you need to stop it somehow and the best way to do it is um, this stuff here, which works great. It's uh, liquid electrical tape, and it is exactly what it says. It's a rubberized compound that's a liquid here, and you just paint it on, and it'll seal. It works wonders on sealing the edges of those wires to keep them from fraying anymore. And also, if you're doing any automotive work on any kind of um, any automotive work on anything or any wires that are going to be exposed to the weather, like if you're um, wiring in a, uh, a harness for your trailer or something like that and you have to cut into your existing tail lights um, coat your connections with this stuff and it'll keep all the salt and, uh, and dirt debris out of it works great so now I'm basically just gonna put this all together but before I do I kinda wanna take a peek at where all the wires go because we have a little bit of a problem and the problem is is I have the motor plate floating around somewhere but I can't remember exactly where I put it and I'm sure it will show up somewhere and also these wires here as you can see are not labeled the only labels I have is this staple here it says one and this tag here that says two now this is a six wire motor here and it's dual voltage that's 230 volt and 110 volt so I know that I have um, two windings in there you have two main windings usually and now each motor is different but I can tell by the way that this is the wires go on this there are two main windings and one start winding and for low voltage you want the windings in parallel for high voltage to await you want the main windings in um, series with each other so what we have to do is basically own these out and figure out what wire goes where and which wire goes to what winding. So I got my little ohm meter here. Now one set of wires is going to go through this centripetal switch here up to the capacitor and back to the winding. Now if your motor was all together the way you would figure out which one went out to your capacitors is you would actually read the resistance of it as you charge the capacitor your resistance will actually go up the one that changes resistance that is your stock circuit but this is all open so I can figure out what goes where so and we got the beep and one right here I could tell that that is that wire to the switch so this here um, it's going up to here I'm pretty sure this wire is this wire which it is so this is the beginning of my start winding and let's see if we can find which one of these is the end of it. That one right there. The tagged wire. So the two tagged wires are my start winding. So just put those together for now. Now pick any other wire. We'll go through and see which one we connect to. There we go these two here that's one of my main windings and which means that this one should be my other main winding which it is I 
just lost my two tagged wires here. And stay together. You know you want to. Alright, so these two here, yep, that's my other main winding. Okay, so now I have everything all visually kind of put together. I know which one goes where. I can put this together now. Um, so I'm just going to put it together off camera, and what I'll do is I will um, solder in those two wires back into the capacitor when I get it all together. And then uh, when we get it all together, we'll wire it up and see if we're right, and we don't blow up a motor. Alright, we got it all together. It spins nice. Um, I don't hear any rubbing or anything like that. And I have one side of each main wind winding and one side of the capacitor hooked up to one power line. And the other side of each main winding and the other capacitor wire hooked up to the other leg. So, we should be able to just plug this in and not have sparks come shooting out of this and have it actually work. There it is. Uh, that's clockwise shaft end. That click you hear, that, that, that big bang you hear when it starts up is just a jump because I don't have it bolted down. But We're not getting warm at all. We got no load on this and we are drawing about three amps. And you should hear the centrifugal switch snap back right there. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now if I wanted to reverse the uh, direction, all I would have to take is one capacitor wire and then the other capacitor wire and just reverse them. Um, that lets power go the opposite way through the start winding and gives it that first initial boost but in the opposite direction. And then the main windings will carry in that direction the whole time. And that's it. So I have another uh, for pretty much about the price of the capacitor and the bearings. The bearings were a little, a little more on the expensive side. So for um, around thirty bucks or so, I got a perfectly functional motor. You know, thirty bucks and maybe an hour or so of time, um, you got yourself a perfectly functional motor. So if you all shits the bed and all you got is bearings, don't throw it away. You can fix them. So. Uh, Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one, and we'll get back to some machining. We're going to make a cat's head.